<clears throat> hey everybody, happy Thursday. Um, I'm Jilly from Baby Sleep Made Simple. Coming at you again for the, only the second time this week actually. We're only doing three Instagram lives this week. We did Tuesday, we're doing today, and we have tomorrow. Yesterday was my daughter's sixth birthday, for those of you that didn't know that, and it was a very, very big deal. She handled this whole quarantine business honestly like a champ. My birthday was a few weeks ago and she probably handled it better than me. <laughs> Not joking. Um, she did great. Everything was about her though. So all three meals were about her. Everything we did, we managed to have a picnic in the car, which she wanted to do because the weather was yucky. Um, played loads of games, baked. I'm exhausted, but it was so good and she took it really well. So that was my big goal for the week. So now I'm back with you guys and we're talking about early wakings this week. So that is your baby or toddler or older kid waking up too early in the morning. And by too early, I, one of my few hard rules I have, really I don't love hard rules, but one of the few hard rules I have is that any waking before 6 a.m. is a night waking and should be treated as a night waking. So when I say waking too early, I mean waking up before six o'clock for the day. Um, one mom wrote me, I think it was on the Instagram live on Tuesday. She's like, do you mean just waking up for a feed at 4 a.m. or like getting up, getting up? And I'm like, no, getting up, like <laughs> bad. So that's what we're talking about. We talked about babies on Monday and Tuesday. If you have a baby younger than 12 months, you can check out that specific post. You can also go to my YouTube channel because I managed to save that video on Tuesday. Um, just go to my YouTube channel, Baby Sleep Made Simple, and it's the most recent video that's added. It's like right under an hour, and you can watch the Instagram Live, which was really cool. I managed to save that one. I will try to save today's as well. Today, we're gonna try to focus more on toddlers. We'll see what the questions are that come in. Um, I'm gonna try to keep up with questions better. I won't spend so much time. Tresinka, thank you. It was such a good birthday. Um, I'm just checking through. Yep, toddler waking early. Cool. So I don't. I want to like try to keep up with your questions today. So what I'll do is I may not even. I'll just show you this real quick. I forgot what we were talking about. We're talking about toddlers. <laughs> it's my brain these days. You know I love to do this. So this is the graphic that we made today, toddler waking at 5 a.m. These are the nine steps. They're very similar to the baby steps, but we talk a little bit more about your toddler's physical activity and things that they do during the day because as your toddler gets older, even more so than babies, they need to really um, expend all that physical energy and mental energy. They need to be stimulated, which is kind of hard in the days of quarantine. So if you have specific questions about like, stuck at home and how in the world can I do these tips, then ask away. But here are your nine tips. But what I'll do is if you want more detail, you can you know check out my post on Instagram. Facebook has more details because they let me write more. Um, but I'm just gonna start answering your questions now because I hate ending the call after an hour. Face um, Instagram locks me out after an hour and I hate missing questions. So if we have time, we'll go over these nine steps, but that's what I'm gonna refer to in the answers anyway. Um, okay, here we go. First question is Liana, six month old. Okay, it's a baby, but we can answer this. Bedtime is 7.30, that's great. Starts to talk around 4 a.m. Is it overtiredness, wrong bedtime, or too much day sleep? Two and a half hours total and two naps is also perfect. I play white noise, white noise and I have a dark bedroom. No, I mean, it could just be that she's starting to talk around 4 a.m. It could be, is she sleeping independently? So in this graphic here for toddlers, it's number six. But in addition to setting the scene of white noise, blacked out room, in addition to having the right sleep times, looks like you have enough naps. I don't know what your awake times are. You should definitely check out my post from Monday and Tuesday because it has specific tips for babies. But so it depends on like the awake times. Um, but what I would say it also, if she's not yet sleeping independently, then that's definitely something to work on because when your little one can settle themselves to sleep at bedtime and if they have any night wakings then they can also resettle themselves back to sleep at 4 a.m. but if they need your help to fall asleep um, normally then 4 a.m. it can be extra hard for you to even get them back to sleep right normal tactics don't work like feeding rocking maybe even pulling into your bed for many little ones it stops working because they've already gotten eight nine ten hours of sleep right so they, they still need to sleep a bit more but the drive to sleep is not as strong. So I would say work on that and definitely check out my post from Monday and Tuesday because they have baby specific um, tips. And also if you click the link in my bio here on Instagram, you'll see one of my guides is how to stop your baby waking too early in the morning. And that's got all the details. So you could just go straight to that guide as well. But 4 a.m. is definitely way too early um, to get up. So don't even consider it until 6 a.m. Hey Courtney, toddler keeps waking early. 
won't take his nap at 12, fights it. Should I move it 12.30 and see if that helps? Yes. I don't remember the details of your toddler. Please forgive my mom brain. I don't even remember messages I sent yesterday. Um, Cause I also have a five month old. Um, and sometimes it just, anyway, I'm sorry. I don't remember the age or the specifics, eh. but yes, I mean, you could try 1230 for sure, but also check out my post from today. Like, are you doing, let's look number two, active days, peaceful evening. So active days. So I don't want to sound unrealistic, but if it's possible, given where you live and what's going on, if you can get your toddler outside in the morning, like an hour minimum, even in your yard, just bring all his toys into the yard and just say, we're playing here today. If it's cold, put on a jacket. If it's slightly raining, put on a raincoat and let him jump around in puddles for 20, 25 minutes. You know what I mean? Like make do with what you have. When you can do that and they can burn off that physical energy that all toddlers have, I promise you they settle so much easier for sleep. Um, so definitely try that. Um, restrict screen time in the morning. I mean, I don't remember the specifics of your of what's going on, but try all of definitely. You could try to push it later for sure, but definitely just as, just as important as getting them outside to burn off energy. Um, okay. I hope that helps. Eunice, you're welcome. I'm so happy you're finding these lives to be helpful. Okay. Hi, Jilly. My four month old has always taken a very long time to rock to sleep. This is not new. It's been the case for two months. Should getting my baby to sleep be so hard? Um, some young babies are just hard to settle and we really can't have like extremely like big expectations for them. Some young babies are just, they're just harder to settle. I don't know how else to say it. It's harder for them to fall asleep. They just seem a bit more uncomfortable and a bit more restless. It doesn't have to be colic or anything, but it's just the case. And I know that was the case for one of my nieces. She's five now, but she was just her first year. She was just hard to settle. She's great, lovely, wonderful five-year-old now, but it was really, really hard for her mom and dad. Um, anyway, so what I would say is don't give up. I'm not meant to discourage you, but just know that some little ones are just harder to settle. That should hopefully motivate you to begin sleep training earlier rather than later, because at the age of five to six months, she, I think, she or he will be able to learn how to settle themselves to sleep. And for many little ones, like that's the trick for them. It's just, they're just the type of little one that isn't really settled easily by someone else, which is kind of what has to happen when they're young. But as soon as they become old enough for sleep training, I would recommend you do it because often these little ones do really well. They can take self-settling better. It's kind of strange, but it's true. Um, for now, what I would recommend uh, for you are my four month old sleep guides. I've got two on my website. You can find them babysleepmansible.com. Just do a search for four month old. I have, why is my four month old not sleeping? And even though it may be hard to help them settle, you can certainly start doing things now during the day and during the evening and during the night to help your four month old get on a more consistent sleep routine and sleep better. It doesn't mean they'll sleep through the night in like four or five days, but it's setting the stage for really like deeper and longer sleep. And they're four month old already. So within a month, you'll be able to start sleep training. So check out those two guides. Why is my four month old not sleeping? The other one's about the four month old sleep regression. It doesn't sound like you have any new issues. You could read it just for fun if you want. Um, but for sure, check out my four month old not sleeping. And you can also sign up for my exhausted mom's survival kit. That link is here in the bio and Instagram. Um, that's a free guide and it's got lots of detail about evening and what to do in the evening. So your little one settles easier, falls asleep quicker and sleeps better at night. So I highly recommend you do the survival kit as well. Um, I mean, it could be that your little one just needs some tweaking to her sleep routine and a few things and then boom, they're, they're, they'll start sleeping better. Or it could be that they're just kind of a harder to settle baby. But again, really soon when you start sleep training, you can get them sleeping amazingly. Um, so I hope that that helps. Uh, don't give up. They're certainly coming up on an age where you can do more active measures to help them. Courtney, what physical activities can I do? We have no garden. Okay, so if you have no garden, then I have two suggestions. Do you have a balcony? Like, do you live in an apartment? If you have a balcony, balcony's fine. Fresh air, um, natural light are fine. You could do all kinds of activities in the garden if you don't have that either. If you have no outdoor space of your own, can you reasonably walk to a local patch of grass where there won't really be many other people? So not a playground or a park, which may be closed. Is there anywhere in your neighborhood that you could walk Whereas like a patch of grass, you could bring a blanket, you could bring lots of toys and you guys could just do like a play picnic. 
If that's not feasible, then just go for a walk. So you could put your toddler in the stroller um, and you could just walk around again till you find somewhere <laughs> where it's like a little bit of room and nobody around and just let your toddler come out of the stroller assuming they can walk already and let them just walk around. Maybe there's wildflowers that they can pick or maybe you take some chalk and you ride on the sidewalk uh, with some chalk or you could have them walk around the block with you. I mean, if you take a one or a two year old outside for a walk, if you make the block, you're doing great and their legs are so much shorter than ours, it will wear them out. Go for a really slow walk, just tell yourself we're just gonna be you know, sightseeing, and then let them you know, point to houses, talk about the houses or the buildings, you know, talk about colors, you know, just make it a fun little exercise, but they're walking, so they're expending some energy. If you have a baby, you can put them in the stroller, although they're not scooting around on their own, being outside, like my little guy's five months, and we're, I mean, it's a beautiful day today, finally, we had some yucky days. So we've been outside most of the day, and I see such a difference with him, he loves it, he like soaks it in, but also he's more tired when it's time to sleep. So even for babies, don't think like it's not worth it if they just sit in the carrier or sit in the stroller, because it helps them as well. So Courtney, hopefully there's somewhere, let's say you live in like the most urban area, Manhattan, assuming they let people go out in Manhattan. I don't know, because it's got such um, issues right now. I mean, can you just reasonably go for a walk? And can your toddler walk next to you? And you guys just like go outside and walk for 20 minutes. Do you know what I mean? Because that can help as well. Bring some chalk or bring some toys in case you find a spot where you guys can play for a little while. If anybody else has really good ideas for a toddler and getting outside when you don't have a garden or you don't have a yard, please fill in. I had a um, manicure at the six-year-old salon today. So don't be jealous, but <laughs> that's why my <laughs> nails look this way. Um, all right, Courtney, I hope that that helps. If anyone else has great ideas, please help, help us out. Erica, my son is 16 months fighting his second nap, but so overtired that he's sleeping horribly at night and still waking up to nurse three to five times. Okay, so start with night sleep, Erica. At 16 months, he can definitely learn to settle himself to sleep and sleep through the night. And he's ready for it and you're ready for it. So I highly encourage you to teach him to sleep independently. Once he is doing that, which should only be a matter of really of like a days or maybe a week or so, then you can work on getting him one nap a day. What I would do for now, I don't know how the first nap goes, but if he falls asleep quite easily first, the first nap, at 16 months old, the first nap could be about three hours after waking up in the morning. Limit it to one hour, so wake him up. I know, I know, I know. And if he's grumpy, take him outside if possible or have his favorite toy or his favorite snack waiting for him. Wake him up, get him out of that bedroom right away because he's gonna be grumpy. Do something fun. And if you limit the morning nap to only one hour, it will help protect the second nap. And that nap usually comes about three and a half hours later. Um, hopefully he can sleep at least another hour, but up to two. Um, and then um, I would work on night sleep and that's what I would do for daytime sleep. You can still help him nap if possible. Maybe you have to like lay down with him or maybe you have to uh, sit near his crib while he naps or whatever. If you could do that to keep him well rested, um, at least two hours of daytime sleep, but up to three if possible. Um, while you teach him to sleep through the night, then that will help and then you can nap train him. I have guides on all of this. Um, I'm not sure where you are. If you've not started with my survival kit, I would say click the link in my bio, start with my free exhausted mom survival kit that can walk, work you through bedtime. And then definitely check out my one-year-old sleep guide on my website. It's got lots of details of how to set your one-year-old to sleep really, really well. Um, you can do it. And I promise you, by the time we come out of this quarantine mess, you could have a great, great, great sleeper, um, which would be a nice way to start the, new, the next season whenever it might start. Um, okay, if you have any more questions, Erica, just let me know. You're welcome, Liana. Be adventurous. What do you recommend to start independent sleeping for a seven month old who's rocked to sleep and uses mom as a pacifier? Um, so first I have a seven month old sleep guide on my website. So Go to babysleepmysimple.com and find that seven month sleep guide. You can click the age in the top or you can do a search. Um, it depends. I mean, if you have a seven month old, if you're like, I need this little one sleeping really, really good soon because I'm about to lose it. And also my babies just, I can see there's a change in them and they are just fighting me helping them sleep. Um, we need to get this done ASAP. Then you could do a quicker sleep training method, right? So you could do a method where, you know, from the first night you put them in the crib awake and then you teach them how to fall asleep on their own. Maybe you stay with them. Maybe you pop in and out of the room. If you wanted a more gradual method, then I would say keep rocking to sleep for like, four or five days, nothing too long, four or five days keep rocking to sleep, but really try to stop feeding to sleep. So you have rocking and you have feeding to sleep. These are two sleep associations. You could try to get rid of one 
and then keep the other one. Again, don't let this drag on. I would say like two days up to five days max, depending on your little one's adaptability. Um, you could do that. If you have a partner, if there's a dad or someone else around, maybe they could do the rocking instead because being right next to mom's lovely bo bosom it can be hard for some little ones to not feed to sleep. It can be really hard. So if there's someone else around, another caregiver, you could try to have them rock your little one to sleep for a few times just to kind of help break that feed to sleep association. Um, then once you're only rocking, I would do that for like a max of again, two, three days. And then I would work on sleep training. So you're kind of taking a slow and gradual start. And even at that point, you could say, okay, now let's do a quick method. We've weaned off the rock, the feeding to sleep. We're going to stop the rocking. Um, and like weaning off rocking to sleep tends to go a little bit easier for little ones than feeding to sleep. So you could do it that way. It kind of depends on your situation. Um, but for sure, my seven month old sleep guide will give you the foundational steps to get your seven month old sleeping well, um, and then begin teaching independent sleep. Always begin at bedtime and treat night wakings the same as you do at bedtime. And then after our night sleep's going great, you can work on naps. Liana, how loud should I play the white noise? Has to be the same every night. Ah, uh, I mean, if like, Okay, normally I would say if it's a quiet night in your house, then it could be not so loud. But if you're having a dinner party in the future, then maybe you'd want the white noise to be a little bit louder. Um, basically, turn on the white noise and you hang out in the room for five to 10 minutes. And as long as it's not too loud for you, like obviously deafening or just so loud that you find it irritating, then it's probably at a good volume. I mean, you don't want it to be super, super quiet. The point is for it to be ambient noise that blocks out noises from both inside and outside the house. If you really want to be quite specific, you could download an app that tracks decibels and you want to aim for it to be about 60 decibels. Um, that's a healthy and safe volume, but also loud enough that it actually serves its purpose. Um, if you think it's too loud, it probably is too loud. Do not put white noise in your baby's crib and don't put it right next to their crib. Like have it be a few feet away from the crib. We don't want like, you know what I mean? So if you have baby's crib and then if you feel like the noises come from the window, like outside because you live in an urban area, put it by the window, which should be at least a foot away from your baby's crib. If the noises come from within your house, like siblings and dogs or you guys, then put it by the door of their bedroom. Munchkin. I have a 22 month old girl who occasionally gets up between 4.30 and 6. She will scream and cry and I'm concerned about her trying to climb out of her crib so I go get her. She will stay up for 15 to 20 minutes and then has a bottle and falls asleep until late. <laughs> Nighttime party girl. Um, so this happens occasionally. What I would say is perhaps there's something going on on those days like where she's not eating or drinking enough that day. So then she wakes up hungrier. So really put a focus on daytime nutrition every day. And like, you know, especially in the afternoon and the evening, make sure she's had enough milk, make sure she's had a good dinner, all that good stuff. It could be that. It could also be something with her schedule during the day. So at 22 months, she should be napping for two hours a day, maybe two and a half. She should be on one nap a day, more than likely. A solid nap a day of two to two and a half hours. If she's like, on, maybe on those days, she's only sleeping an hour and a half or maybe an hour. A little bit less daytime sleep makes her more wired and makes her wake up. So just try to pay attention. And if she has a short nap day where she wakes up after 60 or 90 minutes and you're like, crap, it's going to happen again, then have bedtime be earlier, like 30, 45 minutes earlier. That can actually help because it breaks that overtired cycle from starting. Um, and then I would communicate with her. Like if it's happening often enough, like if it's three times a week or more, I would sit down with her during the day and be like, you know, when she's having a bottle and say, oh, don't you love your bottle and your bottle's great, but bottle's going to go night, night. When you go night, night, we only have bottles during the day. And when she goes to bed at bedtime, she could put her bottle on a pillow and cover it with like a little blanket and say night, night bottle. So that in the night, if she wakes up and is insisting on it, you could say, no, remember it's sleeping. She kind of help her with it that way. Um, so those are some ideas. Um, but if it's not having that much, it's probably like a, a hunger thing. So really make sure she gets enough during the day or potentially a sleep schedule thing. All right. I hope that helps munchkin. Leona, I don't turn on the lights at 4 a.m., but it takes her uh, one to two hours to get back to sleep on her own. If I give her the pacifier, it helps, but will she become dependent on it? You have the, the young one, right? Um, I would just say, oops, I would just say, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember the specifics, but I would just say that whatever you're like, if 
if you're having problems mostly during the night, then you'd focus on bedtime and what you do at bedtime to get your little one to sleep. You also continue into night wakings. Do you know what I mean? But if you have a young baby who's younger than five months and the pacifier can get them back to sleep in the middle of the night quite quickly, then I would keep it until they turn five to six months and you begin sleep training. I would use that as a tool if it's working. You know what I mean? We have to consider your baby's age and realistic expectations. Um, will she be dependent on it? I mean, yes. But the level of dependency, we don't know. Some little ones fall asleep with a pacifier at bedtime and sleep fine through the night. So I hate to like tell you to not use an effective tool right now in, with the fear that it may cause a problem in the future. I would just say if she's young, I would, I would use it if it really, really helps. Because very soon she'll be able to learn to fall asleep on her own without the pacifier. When she's older, it's a little bit more appropriate. Vezapata, 11 month old. Almost one year old goes to bed independently after breastfeeding and a book. He goes to bed at 7.30. He wakes up at 11 and at 4. I breastfeed him and I put him down again. Any advice? Yeah, I mean, by the first birthday, most little ones are ready to sleep through the night. They don't need any night feedings. You can double check this with your doctor, but as long as your little one's growing and eating as he should, then you should feel really, really confident that he can learn to do this. He can sleep 11 to 12 hours straight. Um, it just takes a plan. You know what I mean? You have to know like what to do. So he goes to sleep independently after breastfeeding and a book. So just make sure. So, okay, you're breastfeeding. Then you have a book. You read a book with your little one. So clearly the lights are still on. Um, this is all in my peaceful nightly ritual, which is like the enhanced bedtime routine. Then after book, you're going to pick up your little one, give him a kiss, sing him a lullaby, put him in the crib, light's still on. Give him a kiss. You can sing another lullaby if you want. Turn off the lights at that point because you want him to be awake and aware that he's in his crib when he falls asleep. Lights go off, you leave the room, and then he takes anywhere from five to 20 minutes to fall asleep. If you're not leaving the room, I would work on this because this can make a difference with night wakings. He still depends on you to fall asleep. If, um, I totally forgot what I was gonna say, <laughs> sorry. If you're there like singing or even, even sitting there in the room quietly, this can all make a difference. So I would definitely work on that. Um, when you hear him at 11 and at 4 a.m., you could wait a few minutes and just see if he'll get himself back down. You can just try because this can often work with little ones. But basically have a plan. So if he's completely going to sleep on his own at bedtime without you in the room, uh, I remember what I was going to say. If you do leave the bedroom at bedtime, but he falls asleep quickly and you don't hear a peep from him like ever, 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 like he's out, then he was too drowsy when he went in the crib. And what I would do is work on, work on him being more awake. So keep those lights on and make sure when he goes into his crib, you haven't like rocked him or swayed him for a while to get him drowsy. We don't want drowsy, but asleep. We want, or drowsy, but awake. We want eyes open, very awake. Going into the crib, like, bye mommy, you know, and he's almost one, so he could like cuddle a little teddy bear or a lovey and watch as you leave the room, the lights go off. That's our goal. Because when your little one can do this at bedtime, then you can expect him to do it during the night. That's why. We don't want to help him to sleep at bedtime and then at 4 a.m. be like, why can't you fall asleep on your own? He doesn't know how. He's never been taught. So once you can get there, then you just do the same method for night wakings. You can go in and give him a kiss and you can just remind him it's night, night. The same phrase you say at bedtime. It's night, night. It's time to sleep. Um, you could start by weaning like down to one of the feeds. You could try to cut out the 11 uh, p.m. feed first and hang on to the later feed. Then once you're clearly there, then you could wean off of that. Or you could go cold turkey. I mean, a 12 month old who's eating well during the day, taking plenty of breast feeds can also go cold turkey. Um, just make sure to feed him a little bit more those first few days to help his body adjust. I mean, this is what we help parents do every day in 21 Days to Peace and Quiet, my sleep training program. So we would love to help you. If you feel like you want a step-by-step -step plan and our assistance and our advice and support, we'd be happy to help you out. Um, yeah, but at his age, I'm so confident that you can get it done. Um, so I hope that that helps. Aromatic Mama. Hi, Jilly. My daughter's 17 months, and I'm not sure if she's ready to go to one nap. She's waking up twice in the night, so not sleeping through the night. She's sleep trained and still nursing. Uh, I don't see the rest. Okay. Um, well, you say she's sleep trained. So does that mean she falls asleep on her own at bedtime? So it depends. Like, it's like this. If you sleep trained her and she was sleeping completely independently like at bedtime and through the night and then she started waking up and she's 17 months 
and you hadn't really fallen back into the sleep props, she's just suddenly waking up. It could be that she's ready to transition to one nap. But if she was never quite sleep trained through the night and kind of always depended on feeds or your assistance, then definitely work on that first. Um, if she's waking up twice in the night, she could be tired during the day, which makes her want to have two naps a day and not have the long enough awake times to have one nap. Do you know what I mean? So we always fix the night sleep first. So even if she's like developmentally ready for one nap, she doesn't want one nap because she's not ready for it because she's tired. So I would work on the night sleep at 17 months. I mean, 100% she can sleep through the night. You just have to have a plan. Um, so yeah, I mean, it depends on what you mean by sleep train, but she's waking up twice in the night. Maybe she's going back to sleep on her own. Maybe that's what you mean, but she's nursing. So then I would just work on eliminating those, those feeds at night. You could go cold turkey. You could use a sleep training method to kind of help remind her in the night um, that there's no more night feeds. I have a weaning night feeding guide on my website you could check out. Um, but if she's not really fully independently sleeping bedtime and for night wakings, work on that while you night wean. You can definitely, it can definitely go together. They can definitely happen and she's ready at her age. And then I'm sure within a week or two of sleeping through the night, you'll see that she's ready for one nap because she'll be able to handle longer awake times. Eunice, how to handle an eight month old waking at 5.30 and either dozing in and out of sleep for 30 minutes. If that's the case, leave them. Or back or back to sleep at 6.15 for 10 to 15 minutes. How does schedule work for the first nap on three naps? So if you hear your little one at 5.30 but they're kind of in and out of sleep, leave them. I mean, this is them resettling themselves and this is the goal of sleep training. So certainly don't interrupt those efforts and interrupt them before 6 a.m. Leave them, leave them, leave them. Because the idea is this is like a phase they're going through. And the more you leave them to resettle themselves and learn to sleep independently, then the next thing you know, you'll wake up one day and it'll be 7 o'clock and they're still asleep. They didn't wake up that, that morning. So definitely leave her. Um, the awake times for an 8-month-old, I'd have that first awake time be two hours before the first nap. And you may be thinking, but what's the awake time? She woke at 5.30, but she's asleep. Da, 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 da. Then you can count it from the time you get them out of the bed. So let's say at 5.30 you hear her, but you don't get her until 6.15. And she was kind of off and on until 6.15. 6.15 is the wake-up time. If you hear her at 6.15, but you don't get her till 6.45, but she's clearly been awake for 30 minutes, then count those 30 minutes. We want proper like awake times. But if your little one's in and out of sleep and you're not exactly sure, then count when you know the point that they wake up. Um, so the first nap in that case would be at 8.15 in the morning. But what I will say is if your little one's like sleeping independently at night and sleeping through the night like really, really well, except for this early waking, it could be a sign they're ready for two naps. Switching from three to two naps when your little one is ready um, can help them sleep later in the morning. So if you go to last week, and I know you've been on some calls, Eunice, if you go to last week and you look at the nap transitions post, I think it was last Thursday, um, but definitely last week, then you can see signs that your little one is ready good to go from three to two naps. Okay, I hope that helps. Good, Courtney can think of a spot. That's awesome. How do I get one-on-one -on -one help with my toddler? He still has two to four wake-ups. He's two on the 16th. Oh, he screams waiting for me to go in. Can't cry it out so I have 11 month old too. Well, how do you, you can get help. I mean, you can definitely get help with us in our program, 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. I had someone email me today and they're like, I just don't know if your Facebook support group is gonna be enough help for me. And I understand this, but the truth is the Facebook group is just a means to communicate with you. So you can post a question um, and five days a week, we're answering your question individually. So that's really no different than like sending me a text message where I write back like a detailed response to you. Do you know what I mean? It's just that it's in a Facebook group. So it's a private group, but it's a beautiful and wonderfully supportive like community of parents, mostly moms. We do have some dads in there too, but everyone, I'm going to knock on wood, uh, but everyone's positive and uplifting and encouraging. Like we've honestly never, I'm not good again. We've never had like nastiness or whatever. It's a wonderful group. So not only do you have like me and my team answering your questions, but you have other parents going, Oh, I've been through that. Oh my gosh, here's what really helped me. So it's nice. You get like extra support. So we answer question five days a week. And so really, I just see the Facebook group as like a different way to communicate with you. I still write you back and say, hey, Courtney, let's talk about your little guy. I recommend you do this and this and this and this. Do you know what I mean? Um, so you can sign up for 21 Days to Peace and Quiet. That's how you can work with us. Um, if he's turning to, honey, he can sleep through the night. And, you know, 
if you have an 11 month old as well, like you guys need your rest, you need your sleep because you're housebound, you've got two little ones. So let's make it happen. Um, and we don't just have cr like crying methods in the program. You can choose other methods. We can come up with some solutions um, to help your little guy learn to sleep better. All right, let us know if you have any questions. Basily, how many hours for naps for four months? My daughter is waking up after 2 a.m. and wants to play. No way. She may be napping too much. At four months old, track her sleep with an app like Huckleberry so, so that you know you're being super accurate with how much cumulative daytime sleep she's getting, so total daytime sleep. And I would limit it to four hours. Yeah, four hours daytime sleep. If she's getting like six, then that's too much. Depends on little ones, but you could start with like a firm limit of four hours. So keep awake times of one to two hours, uh, one and a half to two and a half hours all throughout the day. And if any nap reaches the two hour mark, no matter which nap it is, wake her up. Wake her up, like kind of, you know, undress her, change her diaper, feed her. You want to help her understand that daytime is for being awake and taking some naps, but nighttime is for deep sleep. So more than likely she's getting um, too much daytime sleep. She's kind of confusing her days and her nights. So four hours total. Wake her up from any individual nap after two hours. Um, and then she can have some smaller naps to get her total of four um, and have an appropriate bedtime. Um, check out why is my four-month-old not sleeping on my website. It's got more specific tips for four-month-olds. Um, but for sure, she can learn to sleep later than 2 a.m. <laughs> Anna Green, the problem is that my 17 month old wants me in the middle of the night. Even if her dad steps in to help, she cries until he gives her back to me. Yeah, I know, I know. Especially that age, separation anxiety can peak and little ones just want mama, mama. Um, but, you know, maybe it's not that big of a problem if you have a clear plan of how you're gonna handle the night waking. So even though she wants you, which can make it like harder and more draining for you if you can't get the support that you need your partner could be your support and as long as you have a clear plan like okay she just woke up here's exactly what we're going to do for every single night waking every single night to get her sleeping through the night so it's okay i mean you can still make it happen my daughter was the same when she was a baby she only wanted me she didn't want daddy and then when she learned to sleep independently she was fine with him um so that could be, it's definitely the case for most little ones. Once they're sleeping independently, grandma can step in, you know, when appropriate, like in normal circumstances before we were all stuck at home and isolating. Uh, grandma, babysitters could, could always step in when our little ones sleep independently. So it's okay, Anna. You just have to have a clear plan so that you don't kind of cave and give in and your partner can see your plan and help you stick to it. You're welcome, munchkin. <laughs> all that name. Liana, I'm so happy that you are getting the help that you need. Okay, Terry, my 19-month-old needs her pacifier to sleep. She's very dependent on that as well as me being in the room. She sleeps 10 to 11 hours. How do I help her sleep independently? At 19 months, she can keep the pacifier. I mean, she can certainly replace it by herself, so make sure you're encouraging that during the day and during the night. You never put it in for her. You always hand it to her and say, here you go, and then sprinkle like five pacifiers around her crib and let her know, like in the night, if you need a pacifier, there it is. You can always reach and find one. Um, and she's dependent on you being in the room, so it depends on what you're doing. If you are patting her and singing and talking to her, um, that's okay, but start weaning off of that direct support. So start weaning off of the hands-on support. So stop the padding, but do the singing and the talking, right? You can sit in a chair. You don't have to stand up all night since you're not padding anymore. Do that for a few nights until she's no longer needs any padding. And then you can continue to sit in a chair. But what you're going to do is you're only going to sing occasionally. You can sing a very soft lullaby and then you need to be quiet for a few minutes so that she gets used to settling herself in the quiet. And if she starts to get antsy, say, it's okay, mommy's here. I'm going to sing in just a minute, but you need to be quiet you know, close your eyes and wait a few minutes. And then if she gets a bit upset, then you can sing a soft lullaby again. And then again, pause for several minutes. So you're weaning off of that verbal support. And then once you've been there a few days, you're just gonna sit in the room quietly and slowly kind of move yourself towards the door over a matter of days. You don't wanna get stuck in any one phase for very long. That's a super gradual um, plan, but you could also do controlled crime. You could also sit down with her and say like, okay, you're going to fall asleep in your bed. Mommy's here. Mommy's going to be checking on you. And you could do a method like fervor. So it kind of just depends. Um, yeah, you have several options. So I hope you don't feel like you don't have any options. You actually have several options and communication is great at this age. So I would encourage you to talk to you a little bit about it. Vita, my son is 22 months and has only slept 11 hours for nighttime sleep. Bedtime is seven and he's usually up by six, really six 30. That's okay. 
He has begun to wake at 5.30 or 5. That's not okay. <laughs> Nap is one and a half hours, not tired during the day. Well, here's the deal. Don't be fooled. He needs his naps. He's just hoping you think he doesn't need his naps. Um, 22 to 24 months can be a period of disrupted sleep because there's so much development that goes on. This is like the last sleep regression that we see. But Vita, don't take this as a sign that your little one doesn't suddenly need long nap or doesn't need as much night sleep. Um, make sure you're having these active days, like number two in this guide, active days and peaceful evenings. So if possible, given the circumstances, if there anywhere that you can go outside to let him run around, do it, do it, do it. Do it in the morning and try to stay out like at least an hour. Just running around, having a great time, fresh air, natural light, despite the weather. I really encourage you to do that. Then come home, have a bit of lunch, and then draw the curtains, you know, inside voices, peaceful, peaceful vibes, not too many distractions, and then uh, let him know so you're going to have a nap now, and mommy's going to come tell you when your nap is finished, you know? <laughs> I'm going to tell you. Not you. And if you wake to the hour and a half mark, you can go to him, give him a kiss and say, oh, you've napped so well. Just a little bit longer, a few more minutes, I'm going to come back and let you know when the nap is gone. And then you have to stick to it. He may not fall back asleep the first few days, but by you kind of sticking to your word and always treating the short nap the same way, he will go back to napping longer. Um, and we want him to nap about two hours. By 24 months, we usually limit it to two hours. So two to two and a half hours until then. Um... The short nap could actually be contributing to the early waking because he could be getting like in an overtired cycle. So that should help it. But also do the exact same thing if he wakes up before six o'clock in the morning. Go to him, give him a quick kiss and say, it's not morning yet. I'll come back and let you know when it's morning. So really just communication um, limits, letting him know what you expect and then kind of sticking to it and getting outside um, morning and afternoon um, can really make a world of difference. All right. You can also check out my early waking guide if you click the link in my bio and check out my toddler specific one because it's got way more details as well. Eunice, I did answer your question though. Sorry, I skipped. I didn't mean to skip over it. I think I'm going in order. That must mean I'm really behind. Um, Vijetha. Vijetha. How do I transition a co-sleeping toddler to her crib and also not dependent on me? I mean, I could talk a long time about this. Um, it's kind of not a quick answer, but it's basically how do I sleep train my toddler, right? And we happen to be in a co-sleeping situation. She's super dependent on me for sleep, but basically how do I sleep train? So obviously you can imagine I have a lot to say about this. I will say if you haven't yet, I've got some guides for you that will give you a lot more detail. Um, my free exhausted mom survival kit. If you click the link in my bio, it's a free guide. You sign up for it. I email you straight away. And every day I send you more tips specific to your toddler to help or learn to fall asleep quicker, sleep better at night, and more independently. So definitely check that out. And then I don't know if you have a one or a two-year-old, but I have one and two-year-old guides on my website that give you age-specific tips. So between those two guides, you will have a clear plan of how to start helping her sleep better. Um, and so I would start doing that straight away. It, yeah, it depends. She's probably one year old, I'm guessing. Um, I would start talking about the crib now, even before you plan on using it. Talk about it, say, oh, look, this is your big girl bed. Um, you can sleep with your teddy bear and it's going to be so great. You're going to be sleeping in here. Mommy's going to be checking on you. You can start to build the hype around the crib now. And then in a few days when you, uh, put her in there for sleep, it won't be like so dramatic and like, what is this space you're asking me to sleep in? You'll have already talked about it with her. She'll know what it is and you will really have hyped it up. So check out those two guides and hopefully, um, that can help you a lot. Um, Katiope, my son is two and a half years old does not want to sleep in his bed. We've tried everything. He keeps on waking up every 30 minutes or hour. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm guessing he's in a toddler bed. If you go to YouTube and you go to my channel, so Baby Sleep Made Simple, if you look in the toddler section playlist or just do a search on my channel and you just like write in like sleep training toddler, I've got a specific video that walks you through keeping your toddler like at bedtime falling asleep in his toddler bed and staying there all night. So please go check that out now. I think it's called something general, like how to get your toddler sleeping through the night, something like that. Um, check that out. And then I also have a guide on my website, how to get your toddler to stay in their bed all night. 
excuse me. So you can check out both of those, like the, the website articles, like the, like how to build the foundation for it. And the YouTube videos, like the specifics of do this at bedtime, do this during the night. So check that out. But as you can imagine with a two and a half year old, you've got to let them know what you expect and you got to stick to your guns. So no matter if the first night or two, he continues to wake every 30 minutes, you know, you're setting the stage for independent sleep for years. You're not doing it for this week or next week. You're doing it for years. It's not too late. Children can learn to sleep well at every age. So don't think that you've wasted it and it's too late. Trust me, when he's three, three and a half, five, seven, you'll be like thanking yourself um, for just doing that bit of work for a week or so of encouraging independent sleep. So check out those two guides, but certainly um, there's a lot you can do to help him sleep well. Good luck. Heidi Spriggs, how should I handle my 14 month old's early morning wakings? Let her cry, comfort her and leave again. Um, well, first of all, you make sure you're doing all these nine steps because these nine steps kind of are like little things that you can change and then boom, they're sleeping later. But if you're doing all this super consistently, but let's just say that bedtime is like 645 and she's waking up a bit before six and you'd like to encourage her to sleep a little bit longer. Um, it depends on your little one. What you can do is you can try the comforting first. So for the first, like the next few nights, when you hear her at, you didn't say what time, but let's just say five o'clock. When you hear at five o'clock, give her a minute, give her a minute, always give it a minute. And then go to her super, super calmly and quietly and just say, shh, it's still nighttime. I'll come back when it's morning, okay? I'll come back. Give her a kiss and then leave. See how that goes. If she's fussing, just leave her for a while. But if she's full on screaming, then you know, go back and let her know. It's still night, it's still night. Maybe you have to sit in a chair in the room. I'm not sure how you've been handling it. You know, as long as you're encouraging a bit more independent sleep than what you have been doing. But if you find that you do this and you feel like, you know what, I think it's just pissing her off a lot more and waking her up, then you don't have to go to her right away at five o'clock. I mean, some parents don't. Some parents are like, if I go in the room, for sure it stimulates her too much or frustrates her or excites her. And so they just wait. They just wait until, let's say, six o'clock to get their little one out of the bed. It depends if they're just kind of fussing off and on or certainly if they're talking or playing, they just leave them. So you kind of have to see how your little one responds to know what the best option is. But for sure, for all little ones, the less stimulation and interaction, the better. So you have to see how that works out for your little one. Don't be scared to leave them. You know, they're safe. You know, they're okay. They're just mad about it. This is basically your only option for them to learn that they, it's still nighttime and they need to resettle themselves back to sleep. They'll never learn that if we scoop them up at five o'clock and bring them into our bed or start the day. They'll never, they'll never do it. <laughs> they'll never learn, oh, I should sleep later. So you have to encourage it. Whether you go and pop in or whether you don't, you can certainly try both options and see how your little one responds better. Early wakings are no fun. Um, okay, so Vietha again, my daughter's 14 months. Okay, more details. It's been a week since I sleep trained her, but she sleeps with me and I'm with her when she goes to bed. I'm afraid to go out of the room before she goes to bed. Yeah, I would get her in the crib because at 14 months, she could roll off the bed. She could just get off the bed and start walking around. So when you start sleep training at bedtime to get her falling asleep completely on her own, I would have it be in the crib. Just take your bed off the menu and now the crib is the place where she sleeps. You have to kind of make that distinction. And within a few days, she will understand like the crib is the only place I sleep as long as you don't bring her back into your bed. If she gets to come into your bed sometimes, then she's going to keep fighting for it. But within like, honestly, over time, she won't think of your bed as a sleep space anymore. She'll have hers, but you just kind of have to decide it and you have to start using it and stick to it. Trey Cinco, thanks again for everything. Our little one is sleeping so much better. Good. Naps are a work in progress, but we're all better rested. Amazing. PNR, Exhausted Mom Survivor, survivor Kit. I like that. <laughs> we should all be the survivors of the survival kit. All the guides and live saves. I'm so happy to hear that's amazing. You did the hard work, honey. So congratulate yourself. Terry, she sleeps in a bed, not a crib, and I will just sit there with my three-month-old, so I have to both of them to sleep at the same time or I will go nuts. I know, I know. I, I'm the same. I have a five-year-old. Well, she's just turned six and is soon to be six-month-old. And I'm like you. Like, sometimes I separate out bedtime because we're still working through it. And then I'm like, this sucks. Two bedtimes. <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> Together. So, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a juggling act, but you'll discover exactly what works. Um, 
I mean, a three month old's good because they're not like as distracted as like a 10 month old be, would be if you're trying to work on your, your like two year old sleep. You know what I mean? A, not a 10 month old be like, what's going on? A three month old's probably like, you know, if you're just cuddling them or feeding them or whatever, they probably won't notice what's going on. But just think like, okay, here's where I am right now. It sucks, but think of where I can be in two weeks time. And so we can do it. We can, we can make it through these two weeks to get everybody sleeping great. 7.30 is a good bedtime. Better yourself. I think my nine-month-old is ready to drop a nap. Even if he fights the third nap, he seems to be tired. He's been waking up at 5.30. I'm trying to put him to bed early, which is between 6.45 to 7. So better yourself. If you look at last week, we talked all about naps. And on Thursday, I believe it is, we talked about nap transitions. And so specifically knowing when your little one's ready to drop that third nap. Waking early in the morning can be a sign, but it's not a sure sign because it depends on what else is going on with their sleep. So go back to last week's um, post and you can get um, information on that. Also on my website, you can check out my non-month-old sleep guide and you can check out my three to two nap transition guide. I've got all the guides for you. They'll lay out all the steps for you. Sophia, my baby's five months and just falls asleep while nursing. He does not like pacifiers. How can I help him fall asleep by himself, especially during the night when he wakes up every two to three hours? I have a five-month-old sleep training guide on my website, Sophia. So it's meant for you. It's got all the steps to start teaching your five-year-old how to sleep more independently and to sleep better. So you, it tells you how you can stop... Um, how you can set this scene for it to stop nursing to sleep. And also you can certainly start getting longer sleep stretches as well. So check that out. It's got all the information for you. Don't worry about a pacifier. If he doesn't want it, that's good. Then you don't need to give it as a sleep aid. He's at the age where he can learn to sleep without needing a pacifier or nursing. Uh, Lily, how do I stop nursing to sleep? She screams until I give in. I don't know what to do. I'm exhausted. It depends on their age. Um, so go to, um, babysleepmadesimple.com, click your little one's age in the top menu and get the appropriate sleep guide that'll walk you through what to do. Um, I mean, if you're going from nursing to sleep to just like, I can't handle this and putting them in the crib awake, they will scream. So it's better if you take a few days to build a solid and consistent sleep foundation. It helps sleep training go easier. But check out that and check out my Exhausted Mom Survival Kit. The link is in my bio and that walks you through getting your little one um, set up to sleep great at night. It would be useful to tell us about your sleep training with your toddler. Some examples. Happy sixth birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Do you mean my little one, my five, five month old? or my daughter when she was a toddler. Um, I didn't have to really sleep her when she was a toddler because we sleep her as a baby. There was once where we traveled, so we went on a big international trip for six weeks. Gosh, that's right. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. So she was almost two. She was like two or three months shy of two. And I didn't want to go on the trip for obvious reasons. <laughs> my husband's like, no, we're going. And he was so right because it was great. And she slept great. I mean, she was almost two. She'd been a great sleeper for over a year. Anyway, so my whole point of telling you guys this is that when, oh gosh, we got sick on the trip and jet lag and all that stuff. So she did well, given all that. Um, and she had a lot of car naps because she would only nap once a day and we were driving the California coast. It was great. Um, however, when we got back home, she definitely needed a sleep training tune up. Um, yeah, I'll have to remember the details of that. I know we chose a gentler method at that point because she had been sleeping so well for so long. Like I didn't have to necessarily do controlled crying like I did when she was a baby. Um, so I did kind of like a lingering method where at bedtime I got her used to falling asleep in her crib again. Um, and then I lingered at the bedside and then I slowly went off my support. But anyway, or if you're talking about my five month old now, I will definitely let you guys know. Look, he's touch wood. He's sleeping well and I'm not pushing too hard. Do you know what I mean? But we will start sleep training soon. I'll let you guys know all the details. Better yourself. Regarding the 5.30 a.m. waking, I've tried to go into my nine-month-old and tell him to go back to sleep, but he cries so much and just won't stop. It's harder to tell a nine-month-old than it is to tell like a 19-month-old. They just have limited understanding. So really with a baby in early wakings, it's all about sleep routine, sleep schedule, like the, what we can do to help them. They really don't understand um, at nine months old, like, you know, it, it's, it's a lot harder. So communication, I don't emphasize it as much with babies. You can certainly talk to them and let them know, but it doesn't work as well. So instead, better yourself. If you look, um, at my baby guide, baby waking early, you can click the link in my bio. It'll walk you through, um, all the details, but yeah, if you're like just trying that, it probably won't work. Basily, thank you. Me again. So Ella's four months 
When is the best time to let her sleep in her room? So the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that you room share for at least the first six months of your baby's life, and then you can go up to 12 months. Like they recommend it, but they highly recommend six months, and then they recommend 12. It's really a personal decision. Um, I would say to make you feel better and give you peace of mind to use a video monitor whenever you move baby to their own bedroom. I certainly have clients who move babies to their own bedrooms earlier than six months, but that's just your choice. Talk about it with your doctor, you know. Give them a call and just say, listen, you know, if you're thinking about it, like ask them what's their opinion or if you're thinking about doing it now, is that okay? Uh, but those are kind of the official guidelines. Um, so it's kind of a personal decision. Vida, thank you. I was afraid everything was falling apart. How do we go off his awake time for his nap? If he's been up since five off and on, but sitting up awake since 5.30, then I would say 5.30. If there's ever an off and on and you can't be 100% confident that they were awake the whole time, then go with the time that you know that they were awake. So 5.30. And guys, no matter what, I promise you not everything is falling apart. Like you can always get your little one sleeping well again. Like we went on that big vacation with my little one. And I'm sure, it's hard to remember because it was like four years ago. But I'm sure I was like, oh my gosh, you know, what are we going to do? But we got her sleeping well again. <laughs> you can always, always do it no matter the age or situation. Val Snow, not related, but I have a 28-month-old and a 6-month-old. When do you think they can share a room? Um, I mean, whenever you want, but usually I say at one year. So so I say get your baby sleeping great and sleeping through the night. And usually at one year, you can move the crib into the sibling's room and they can sleep there. Because if your little one's sleeping through the night, excuse me, then they sh ideally shouldn't wake each other up. Obviously, your baby's going to go through some rough patches or some regressions. Um, but certainly by one year old, you can do it. So we're going to have our little ones share a room too. My daughter's so sweet. She's so excited. <laughs> She's six and she really wants to sleep with the baby. She's such like a little mummy. And so we plan to do it at one year. And we're definitely going to keep him in a crib. So we're going to put the crib in their bedroom. They already have bunk beds in there. We're going to move a crib in there. And we're going to keep him in the crib as long as possible. Definitely till like two and a half. So that's my opinion on it. Try to wait till one year, but you certainly, I mean, just because babies are going to wake in the night and often they're feeding and you don't want to, you don't want to disrupt your 28 month old sleep. That's a thing, right? Um, so I would do one year, definitely use white noise. And once your baby's sleeping through the night, you can do it. Courtney, would the Ferber method be affected during the night with a sensitive toddler? It can be. I would use lots of communication like we talked about earlier. Um, in my program, if we have a sensitive toddler, I do recommend methods where you stay with your little one, though. Certainly the first few nights to get him used to it. So depending on where you're coming from, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you, if like with an earlier question, you have a co-sleeping toddler who's dependent on nursing to sleep and shares a bed with mom, and they're super sensitive and moving to Ferber could be too much. Um, so I would say... You could take the Ferber method and what it's based on and just say, okay, for the first three nights, rather than like straight away, like putting them in the bed and leaving the room for intervals, I'm going to spend two to three nights giving hands on support. So putting them in the crib and like giving them a pickup if they get inconsolable or sitting next to the crib for a few nights, reassuring them, singing, patting. And then by night three, we're going to start Ferber method. So you could do like a gentle entry into the Ferber method. That could really help your sensitive toddler with lots of communication, lots of reassurance, letting them know you're always there checking on them. Um... A lot of parents will do that. They'll start off with a slower method and then they'll go to something like Ferber once they feel like they've set the scene well and now they just want to kind of get it done, you know, get their little one sleeping great. Um, you're welcome. Terry, thank you for the advice. I'll definitely try it. You're welcome. Oh my gosh. I got all the questions answered. Oh, such a feeling of accomplishment. Okay, guys, great, great, great questions. Thank you guys for showing up. I hope you got some helpful tips. Um, good luck getting your little ones sleeping later in the morning and all the other sleep training stuff that comes along with it. Um, I don't know what we're going to do tomorrow. Maybe we'll just do an open Q and a, um, I don't have anything really planned. So we'll be back at the same time tomorrow here on Instagram, maybe just an open Q and a call. Um, and then I'll post in my stories. What you, what do you guys want to talk about next week? What theme? So I'll do that now when we hang up, but thank you guys for showing up. I plan to save this video and put it on my YouTube channel. Take care. Try to do something small today that's a little bit fun, feels a little bit different to kind of lift your spirits. Um, I highly recommend picnics or picnics in the car. <laughs> We've been doing a lot of those. Um, happy Easter weekend. Yes. Happy Easter weekend. My, oh my gosh. I've lost track of everything. My daughter actually came. She showed me her daddy went and got her um, this one of these big Cadbury eggs for Easter. So happy Easter. So we were planning to do a little Easter hunt around our garden. Hopefully you guys can do it. Maybe even just an Easter egg hunt around the house. Um... 
your baby's only nine months, but you're here to learn. Good, good, good. Learning is good. Um, hi, Claire. Yeah. Happy Easter, everybody. So yeah, I'll be back tomorrow, probably with just the general Q&A, and let me know. I'll do a story now with a question box. Let me know what you want to talk about next week. All right, guys, take care.